Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of things that are supposed to be complicated but really aren't, like polymorphism, inheritance, protected methods, and final methods, and a whole bunch of other different things. Well, the first thing I did here was I created a new class called the Animals class, and I'm going to come in here and go class and type in Animals, just like that. And then I'm going to create a private field. It's a string and it's going to be called name. And I'm going to give name a default value of animal. And then I'm going to create a public string. And I'm going to call this favorite food is equal to food. So those are just default values that we put in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about protected. I'm going to create a protected method. And what that means is I'm going to use the private and the public fields that I created here to explain what protected is. Private means that the only thing that has access to this information is the animals class itself. That is it. And public means that the whole world has access to it. What protected means is, well, I have to explain something else. Animals is what is called a superclass. And it's called a superclass because we expect to make subclasses or copies of it and then change those copies in one way or another. Now, if we want those copies or those subclasses to be able to access this method that we're creating here, we have to call it a protected rather than a private or a public method. Now, remember I said a subclass is a copy of animals. Well, in copying the animal class, it is possible to override a method or take and create a method with exactly the same name, however, have it do completely different things. If you want to block a subclass from being able to do that, you put in the final word. That's it. That just means that this method that we are creating here cannot be changed by any subclasses. If you're not quite getting this, the code is underneath of this video and it's heavily common. It. But just stick with me here as you see a couple examples. This should make a lot of sense. And there it is. It accepts a new name. And then we're going to say this, which is a reference to an object that was created using the animals class. So this is the object that is being created using the blueprint, which is what the class is, just a blueprint for creating objects. Then we're going to go and protect it, create another protected final method. And this guy's going to return a string. So we're just going to say return this name. Then we're going to create another method, public void. It doesn't return anything. Call it eat stuff because it probably makes sense for our animal to be able to eat. And this guy is just going to print out the word yum followed by fave food. It's all it's going to do. And then I'm going to create another one, public void walk around. It's not going to receive any attributes. And then what this guy's going to do, this is actually going to be a method that we're going to overwrite. It's going to go this name plus walks around. Real simple. Then we're going to create a constructor. This is just a generic constructor for the animals class. And then we're going to create a more complicated one. Animals, string, name, string, favorite, food. And this guy's going to go this, change name, name is passed to it, and this dot favorite food is equal to favorite food. And everything's been saved there, and that is the end of the animals class. So now what we're going to do is create a subclass or a copy of the animal class, and it's going to be called cat. And how you do that is just go same sort of thing, except we're going to go cats and we're going to go extends animal. And that just means I want to copy all of the methods and all the fields that are defined in the animal class. And this is referred to as inheritance. Why? Because the cats class is going to inherit all the methods and fields defined inside of animal. That's it. Now what we can do is we can add some new fields inside of the class name cats. Let's say it has a favorite toy or we want it to. So now the cats class is going to have access to a new field called favorite toy and animals does not have access to that. Then we're going to go void, play with, create a new method to play around with our new field that we just created and just type in yay favorite toy. Now I want to override the walk around method. If we jump back over here, you see walk around right here. If I want to override that with the cats class, and I can override walk around, if I would have had public final inside of here, I wouldn't have been able to override it like I have right here with the change name method. But there is no final, so that means I am allowed to override it. So I'm going to go public void walk around. Just make sure if you want to override it that you do exactly the same sort of things. You define everything exactly the same way. And here we're going to system out. And we're going to go this get name. I'm going to call that get name method. And then I'm going to say stalks around instead of walks around. Not much of a change. 
but just showing you how to override those guys. And then I'm going to go public string because it returns a string. And then I'm going to go return this favorite toy. Semicolon. Create the cats constructor method. There's a generic one that doesn't really do anything. And then create a more elaborate one. And this one will get a string for name and a string for favorite food and then another string for favorite toy. Now, wouldn't it be really, really great if I could call the animals constructor right here that automatically processes the name and the favorite food for me? See, it sets for this new object we're creating the name and also the favorite food. Well, you can. If you want to call a super classes constructor file, just type in super. That's it. And then we're going to pass it the name and let it figure it out. And that's exactly what we did right there. However, favorite toy does not exist in the animals class. So if we want to define it, we have to define it inside of this constructor file. Favorite toy is equal to favorite toy. And there you are. You just defined everything and created a new subclass. Now I'm going to jump over into Java Lesson 14 and play around with these new classes we created. Public class. I'm going to go public, static, void, main. You've seen this guy a bunch of times. Args. And now I'm going to come in here and start creating a bunch of different objects. So let's create an animal object. Animals. Generic. Animal. And you create these objects just in the same way we've created all our other objects. And there you are. I just created a new animal object. Of course, make sure these match up. Now, if I want to output some information to the screen, remember every animal gets generic information assigned to it. So I can come in here and do a generic animal called the get name method. And then we can also go generic animal favorite food. And if we save that and execute it, see what happens. And you can see animal and food pops up there. And the reason why, if we jump back into the animals class we created here, see there's a default animal and food. So we're going to create a cat object called Morris. It's equal to new cat. And we're going to pass it the name and favorite food and favorite toy. Just make sure this is cats and that's cats. And there you go. You just created a new cats object. Now, if we want to execute or print out some information about Morris, very simple. Get name. So that's going to get me Morris's name. That's going to get me Morris's favorite food. And that's going to get me Morris's favorite toy. Throw that in there so there's a new line dividing us up. You can see Morris, Tuna, Rubber Mouse all printed out on the screen. Again, very understandable, very easy to understand here. Now we're going to do something a little bit more crazy. I'm going to create an animal object named Tabby. However, I'm going to define it as a cat. No problem, because every cat is an animal, so this is totally possible to do this. However, not every animal is a cat. You've probably heard that phrase before if you've heard object-oriented programming being explained. There we are. Just created a new animal object named Tabby, but it's really a cat. Well, now what we're going to do is pass this new animal object named Tabby, and this is how you pass an object inside of Java. File save it. Now I need to come down here and create accept animal, do some things with it. And whenever I'm passing this in here, I have to call it an animal object because that is what it is. And then we're going to play around with this guy and see what happens. First thing we want to do is we want to print out exactly what we got here. Random animal. Now because get name is defined inside of the animal object or animal class, I'm able to get a hold of it and also I'm able to get a hold of favorite food. Execute. And you can see that it printed out tabby and salmon so that everything's divided up here. Throw in a couple new lines. And now I'm going to explain the extremely complicated concept of polymorphism. It really is not that complicated. So you see here that this animal is, we, we all know it's a cat, really, because we defined it up here. But does Java know? Yes, Java does. Java knows that even though this is an animal, if a method is called, for example, walk around is called, it knows that if this guy overwrote the walk around method, which it did, let's jump back into animals, see, walk around says this object walks around and cats, you see here, this, whatever its name is, stalks around. Polymorphism is, it says whenever an object is passed or a method is called for a specific object, Java's interpreter is smart enough to say, okay, is this really an animal? Yes, it is. However, is it also a subclass of an animal? Yes, it is. It's a cat. Well, 
if it really is a cat, is there a walk around method defined inside of the cat class? If so, use that new method instead of using the animal walk around method. And as you see here, it's going to do just that. And as you can see here, Tabby stalks around, gets printed out to the screen because Java is smart enough to know that random animal is really a cat. That is all polymorphism is. Everybody tries to make it more complicated than that, but that's really what it is. However, the interpreter is not smart enough to be able to locate methods, for example, or fields, for example, that didn't exist inside of animal. So for example, let's go in here and create something. Let's go random animal, and let's say we wanna have access to favorite toy, which is a field that exists inside of this guy. See, there's favorite toy. That's inside the cats class. However, favorite toy does not exist in the animals class. So whenever we call this, and this is gonna trigger an error, Java says unresolved compilation problem, favorite toy cannot be resolved or is not a field. So Java's kind of smart with the polymorphism up here where it can find any methods that both exist in the animals class as well as the cats class. However, it cannot on its own find any fields or any methods that are defined only in the subclass. Think about that for a minute. Rewind, listen to it again. It'll make sense. However, if you want to access fields or methods only found in the cat class, you have to cast the object to that specific class first. And I'm going to do this as a temporary. So I'm going to go cat temp cat cats that is and i'm gonna cast it just like we cast everything else so i'm taking the random animal and i'm telling the interpreter hey i want to create a new temp cat and i want to take the random animal animal class and convert it into a cat now i can take this guy right up here print that out but instead we're going to call the temp cat and if we do that and execute it it's now going to work and you can see ball gets printed out onto the screen. There's another couple different ways of doing this stuff though. You could also cast the object directly. So, and how you do that, we'll just go system out print line and you can cast it right inside of here. Cats, like that, like that. And you can see it printed ball again. And just so you can see this a little bit better, let's copy that out of there. That's what you need to do. You need to put the whole entire thing inside of these brackets here and then cast inside of that. So that keeps you from having to do the temporaries and all these other different things. Now, if you want to check if an object is an instance of or has the ability to access the methods and fields defined inside of a certain class, you can do that as well. So if we want to go and check if random animal is an instance of or has access to those things, just do it like that. Print line is a cat. And if this comes back positive, it's going to print out whatever this animal's name is, is a cat. And you can see, Tabby is a cat. However, it's also going to work if you type in animals. Because guess what? Not only is Tabby a cat, but Tabby is also an animal. And you can see there. So there's a whole bunch of different things about Java and object-oriented programming. Leave any questions or comments below if I didn't make anything 100% clear. But if you go download this code and it's free and all that stuff, it should be 100% understandable to you. Till next time.